Glucose we ingest needs insulin to be inserted into the cell and be used as an energy source. When the body lacks insulin production, diabetes type 1, or lacks insulin production in association with cells' resistance to insulin, diabetes type 2, glucose won't be able to enter these cells and its blood concentration will be abnormally high, hyperglycemia. So how to easily memorize the consequences of hyperglycemia and therefore signs of diabetes? That's coming up. We'll see signs of diabetes, then acute complications plus chronic complications, and we'll end up with a summary, along with hacks to help you learn way faster. So let's start with signs of diabetes. Chronic hyperglycemia is responsible of glucose being excreted in urine, glycosuria, and this glucose attracts water too, by osmosis. Therefore, urine volume is elevated and the person urinates frequently. That's polyuria. Part of this water comes from cells, by osmosis too. The patient is frequently thirsty, polydipsia. And as explained in the beginning, glucose won't be inserted into cells and that will trigger frequent hunger. That's polyphagia. Furthermore, Fatty acids belonging to adipocytes, the fat cells, and muscles proteins will be used as the energy source, which explains the lipolysis and amyotrophia, and those will result in weight loss. So basically, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, and weight loss. But these symptoms can be discrete or absent if patient has type 2 diabetes, which is the case 9 times out of 10. And this can be explained by the fact that obesity is progressive and since it's responsible of the relative insulin deficiency and insulin resistance, those will be progressive as well. Therefore, the body has time to adapt and most of the time, symptoms do not appear. Age of incidence of type 2 diabetes is also high because of that, about 40 and more, compared to about 20 and less for type 1 diabetes of which patients are usually thin. Now let's move on to acute diabetes complications. Hyperglycemia leads to cellular dehydration, which can be sudden. Dehydrated neurons will manifest as altered consciousness or even coma, which we call hyperosmolar coma, since caused by hyperglycemia. A similar state can be due to the use of fatty acids as an energy source, which results in ketonic acids in the blood. And as the name suggests, these are acid and will acidify the blood. The resulting acidosis, or precisely ketoacidosis, since due to ketone acids, will trigger a deep breathing to eliminate acid in the form of carbon dioxide. That's Kussmaul breathing. Small being the first doctor who described it, and while smelling the patient's breath, we notice that it resembles to a rotten apple, a characteristic odor of acetone. The patient may subsequently enter a coma, noting that as the other symptoms, this ketoacidosis is rare in type 2 diabetes. Another complication may take place due to poorly monitored hypoglycemic treatment, it is obviously hypoglycemia, which, in addition to the tiredness it is responsible of, will activate the sympathetic system to rise blood glucose to a normal level. However, the patient will have the other effects of the sympathetic system as a consequence, namely agitation, sweating, and panic, among others. As for the lack of cerebral glucose, it will be manifested by an alteration of consciousness that may extend to convulsions or even coma. This hypoglycemia may be caused by overdose or bad timing of insulin intake, an excess or bad timing of physical exercises as well, since it's hypoglycemic, or an insufficient intake of glucose. The reflex in this case is to take a dose of glucose in a spoon of honey or a glass of lemonade, which should fix the blood sugar level in less than 10 minutes. Now let's talk about chronic diabetes complications. This hyperglycemia is also toxic on the long term for blood vessels, because vascular cells don't need insulin to internalize glucose, so it gets inserted excessively into these, causing toxicity. 
This event applies to microscopic vessels, origin of the microvascular complications. In the eyes, retina suffers from a retinopathy with blurred vision up to blindness and the crystalline, the eyes lens, which is normally transparent, becomes opaque, that's cataract. In the kidneys glomeruli, which serve to blood filtration, their function will therefore be altered, that's renal insufficiency. In the nerves, since they are also vascularized by microvessels, we have then a damage of motor innervation of the eyes, oculomotor palsy of the heart, cardiac arrhythmia of vessels, orthostatic hypotension of stomach, gastroparesis and intestines, diarrhea of the bladder, a tonic bladder, of genital organs, erectile dysfunction, impotence, of muscles, paralysis, muscle weakness, and skin, pain, and paresthesia, which is abnormal sensations like burning or tingling. Hyperglycemia is also toxic for the large caliber vessels, which leads to microvascular complications this time. In the heart, knowing it's vascularized by the coronary arteries, it can thus have a myocardial infarction, death of the heart muscle. In the brain, possible stroke, which causes among others hemiplegia and aphasia, and in the arteries of limbs, that will gradually become hard and narrow, atherosclerosis, by inflammation related to the toxicity of glucose. And this causes peripheral vascular disease, itself causing lack of blood supply, ischemia, with several symptoms such as intermittent claudication, a pain during walk, which disappears at rest, ischemia of the skin with cold and cyanized skin, cyan being blue, altered growth of nails and hairs, ulcers of the lower limbs mainly, which are due to poor blood flow, like these other symptoms. Infections, especially by the fungus Candida albicans or the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus that we all have on our skin, but under control of immunity. And since immune cells also suffer from the toxicity of glucose, this allows these microorganisms to cause infections. And sometimes the necrosis, cell death, of a part of this limb requiring amputation. So eyes, kidneys and nerves for the microvessels and brain, heart, limbs and infections for macrovessels. To remember these, keep in mind that diabetics must quit their home or Libken to exercise. Libken meaning house. H for heart, L for limbs, I for infections, B for brain, K for kidneys, E for eyes, and N for nerves. To sum up diabetes, it manifests with polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, and weight loss. Its acute complications are hyperosmolar coma, keroacidosis, and hypoglycemia. And its chronic complications related to blood vessels of large and small caliber show up through anomalies of the heart, limbs, infections, brain, kidneys, eyes, and nerves. H. Lipkin. For a better review and more efficient learning, find this course on PDF through our Facebook group Dr. Astus, meaning Dr. Hack. And from now on, explain that you want to look for a possible diabetes an illness affecting more than 40 million people worldwide and half of the world's diabetics being unaware of their malady. Then examine and interrogate a diabetic patient, a normal patient or a member of your family, depending on availability. And look for these signs through clinical exams, mucocutaneous, cardiovascular and neurological. You can then advise them to get fasting blood glucose tested, for example, if you find these anomalies, and thus avoid them many serious complications, such as amputation, myocardial infarction, and stroke. According to the World Health Organization, there is diabetes when fasting blood glucose level being tested twice with a 15 days interval 
is superior or equal to 1.26 gram per liter. It was a pleasure to have you with us and see you on the next video.